You have learned many functions in your math career from algebra, algebra 2, and pre-calc. And now in calculus, all of those functions, you really need to have stored in your brain. You need to know what they look like and specifically the domain and range. So we call these the parent functions. So no transformations have been performed on them. For example, we might be able to shift them left or right, shift them up or down, stretch them, compress them, reflect them. We'll get into all of that. But these are just the basic functions. What do they all look like? You know, it's as easy as a line, right? So if you have just an X in your equation, a line has a slope and a Y-intercept. The domain and range for, for a, any line is all real numbers, or in interval notation, negative infinity to positive infinity. The reason that is, is any X value, I can plug it in and it will have an output. It will have a Y value. A quadratic function is a function that contains an x squared. It looks like a parabola, which is a phrase I, or a word I'm sure you know. The domain is also all real numbers, meaning you can plug any number in and you will get a number out. As squaring a number always um, makes it positive, so a negative number squared, for example, is positive. Zero squared technically is zero. The range here is only y is greater than or equal to zero. So in interval notation, that's bracket zero, the bracket because it can be zero to infinity. Now again, we might be able to uh, translate this, shift it up and down or reflect it. So in this picture I drew here, the vertex is the lowest point, And that is why the range is from zero to infinity. There are situations where a parabola will open down. Remember that's when the a value is negative. In such cases, this range would look something like negative infinity to maybe zero, if that's where it is, or whatever this y value is, the y value of the vertex. So then a line and x squared are most common, but then we can have a degree three, a degree four, degree five. Remember degree just means the highest exponent in the equation. So for odd degree polynomials, I call them the Michael Jackson graphs. Think of these as the hands, they're going in opposite directions as he's dancing. So for odd degree polynomials, the end behaviors are always in opposite directions. So as the one I drew there looks like that, perhaps you could have another one, maybe something like this. Notice those end behaviors go in opposite directions. The domain and range is all real numbers. I can plug any number in and it is possible for me to get any number out. So notice, both of these types go all the way up to infinity. That's And these bottom arrows pointing down will go all the way down to negative infinity. Even degree polynomials, so x to the fourth, x to the sixth, x to the eighth, they are, think of them as really as really wide parabolas that might have some bumps or ridges in them. So the domain, again, is all real numbers. The range, depending on um, any translations, it is only usually the non-negative numbers, or again, if there's a shift or a reflection. So here's another even degree polynomial I draw. So, you know, maybe something like this. So in the blue graph, notice the end behaviors are both going up. Here, in the one I just drew in green, they're both going down. So a big thing to remember, even degree, the end behaviors are in the same direction, whether they're both up or both down. Odd degree, however, they're opposite directions. Exponential functions such as e to the x or just a to the x where a is not one or not zero um, looks something like this. So it slowly increases but then as you go the, the slopes increase faster and faster or higher and higher so that it increases more steeply. The domain again is all real numbers. The range is only positive numbers. So notice there's a parenthesis here for zero because zero, it can never hit zero. And we call that a horizontal asymptote. So notice, notice my dash red line here. That's the horizontal asymptote, y equals zero. An exponential function's inverse is a logarithm. So the logarithmic function, log base a of x, where a is some base, or if the base is e, remember natural log of x, is the inverse of e to the x. This domain is really the range of the original of an exponential, and the range of a logarithmic is the domain of an exponential. They switch, which makes sense. After all, they are inverses. 
So instead of having a horizontal asymptote like an exponential function, these have a vertical asymptote. Notice the anything to the zero power, so I'm going back to exponential, any number to the zero power, except for zero, so like two to the zero, three to the zero, e to the zero, all of those are one, so that's why the y-intercept is one, and the natural log of one is zero. So those are inverses, again, just recognizing what they look like, and these graphs, again, are without any transformations performed. Then there's sine and cosine, right? They're sinusoidal, they make they oscillate back and forth, they're like our wave functions. So this one I drew in particular is sine of x because the sine of zero is zero, so it starts at the origin. Cosine, the cosine of zero is one, so this actually starts at its highest point. So it would look something like this if I keep drawing it. So really they are just vertical translations of each other. The domain is all real numbers. The range, notice, they're not asymptotes, but think of them, they're kind of boundaries. So um, if it's if the a value or the amplitude is two, it'd go from negative two to two. And there's brackets here because the sinusoidals, the sine and cosine does hit two, and it does hit negative two, for example. Tangents are funky. Notice the domain is really ugly to look at. But the range is all real numbers, meaning it will go up to infinity and down to negative infinity. There's a lot of vertical asymptotes, which are evenly spread. So again, the one that I'm outlining right here, so see where my red arrow is? That is kind of just one, one iteration of the tangent graph. And that one that I just highlighted, its domain is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And then what is all of this? Well, if n is any integer, like if I plug in uh, 0, I'm going to get 1 pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. So that would then describe this one. If I plug in uh, negative 1, I'm going to get negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, which is that one. If I plug in negative 2 for n, I get negative 3 pi over 2 to negative pi over 2, which is that one. So then these vertical asymptotes, again, occur, they're pi units apart, so negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, pi over 2 to 3, pi over 2, so on and so forth. Again, if there's transformations performed, again, that might change, but just know you should understand what the basic tangent graph looks like who has a range of all real numbers. The reciprocal function, so reciprocal 1 over x, or really, in general, we might call these, and I'm going to write this word down, we might call these rational functions because they're rational expressions with the numerator and denominator. The domain and range of these is tricky. Um, they have, they sometimes, depending on what they are, will have both vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. We call horizontal asymptotes end behavior asymptotes because it really tells us what's happening to this function at the ends of the graph. Vertical asymptotes occur whenever the denominator is equal to zero. You saw in pre-calc, um, hopefully, that that's not always the case. Remember, sometimes if you factor the numerator and denominator, and there's terms that are in both, they can cancel out. So when a factor is in both the numerator and denominator, they cancel out. So it doesn't actually create a vertical asymptote. What it creates is a whole, okay? And still, it means that the function's not defined there. So this basic 1 over x, here's the domain and range. It's all real numbers except 0 because of this vertical asymptote. The range is all real numbers except 0 for that horizontal asymptote. Absolute value graphs now are V graphs. They make the shape of a V. Of course, sometimes they can be opening downward or have a different slope or a different vertex, but something like that. The domain is always all real numbers. The range, again, that will vary. So in this one I just drew here in, in per, uh, red, excuse me, the range for that one might be negative infinity to two. Again, negative infinity because it goes all the way down, but maybe this vertex is at the y value of two. So I use a two in a bracket there. And finally, we have our root functions and even roots such as the square root, uh, the fourth root, the sixth root, the eighth root, we can only take um, roots of non-negative numbers, meaning zero and positive numbers, to get out real values. 
So it looks like this. It's kind of half of a parabola, you know, if it's rotated 90 degrees. The range also is only non-negative numbers, so 0 to infinity there. So, for example, if I say, what's the square root of 4 right here? The square root of 4 is 2. But I can't take the square root of negative 4, for example. It's, a, it's 2i, which is a complex number, but we're not going to deal with complex numbers. And finally, odd roots, such as the cube root, the fifth root, the seventh root. They are similar to an even root, but we are allowed to take um, odd roots of negative numbers. For example, the uh, let's do the cube root of negative 8. So the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. So notice the domain and range for all of these is all real numbers. So again, what is the goal in this video is you really are expected to know what all of these look like. You are expected to know what the domain and range are. And once we perform transformations, that becomes more complicated. But that is something we will see going forward.